हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू बॉटनी इनसाइडर सो फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर वी आर स्टार्टिंग ऑफ विद अ न्यू लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन ड्रॉसोफिला इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड इट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फ्रॉम द यूनिट नंबर फाइव दैट इज डेवलपमेंटल बायोलॉजी आई विल बी अपलोडिंग मेनी सेशन ऑन द ड्रॉसोफिला टॉपिक रीजन बींग इट इज अ वेरी वास्ट टॉपिक एंड मेनी ऑफ आस फाइंड इट वेरी डिफिकल्ट सो आई विल ट्राई टू मेक दिस टॉपिक एज सिंपल एज पॉसिबल सो फॉलो ऑल दी these series of lectures as uploaded and then you'll be able to clear off this particular topic in the best manner possible so before starting the video if you haven't yet joined me on the telegram channel so just search botany insider or use the link given below in the description box and also do not forget to subscribe to my channel so now let's understand about the drosophila so talking about the introduction of drosophila the common name of the drosophila fila is fruit fly it is commonly given the name of fruit fly the model organism it acts as a model organism in the developmental biology what is a model organism and why do we use drosophila in the developmental biology so for that wait for a minute i'll explain you the reasons for the same it is used in research in the genetics the life span of drosophila is 21 days from the egg to the death it varies with temperature that is the life span could vary with temperature and if we look at the shortest developmental time so it takes 7 days at 28 degree celsius so we have understood that the life span is 21 days and this 21 days could vary with temperature and if the temperature is 28 degree celsius it leads to the shortest developmental time that is for 7 days now we have that why the drosophila is used as a model organism so there are various reasons for the same it is important reason being questions have been asked from this particular area the very first point is that the genome can be manipulated and the investigation of the specific genes can be done that means the drosophila's genome could easily be manipulated it could easily be changed and the investigation of the specific genes can be done second point is that the genome of the drosophila is small in size hence the handling of the genome the handling of the information becomes easy next point is that it have a very short life span that is we have just understood that it have a maximum life span of 21 days and it could change it could depend upon the temperature as well the new life takes only about 6 weeks to develop and because it requires very less time hence the cost of the handling of the drosophila is very less we have the next point as that 75% of the known human diseases have a match in the fruit fly genome that is most of or 75% of the known human diseases have a match with the fruit flies genome and as a result of the same the study of that particular disease become easier and hence the treatment or finding the treatment for the same become easier using the genome of the fruit fly and then implementing it over the humans now talking about the life cycle so specifically the life cycle of the drosophila follows the holo metabolus method of development what do we mean by holo metabolus so it means there occurs complete metamorphogenesis now what is metamorphogenesis i'll explain you in a bit and the next point is that there are four stages of post embryonic life cycle that is after the embryo of the drosophila is formed there occurs four stages after the post embryonic stage and what are those four stages we'll understand in a bit now we have that what is metamorphogenesis you have to remember about this term that is what is holo metabolus holo metabolus method means that in which there occurs complete metamorphogenesis and what is metamorphogenesis so we have learned about the metamorphogenesis as a term in our lower classes and it refers to the process by which a animal or any animal which develops 
physically after the birth or hatching that means the process in which when we have a egg it hatches into a individual and then there occurs physical changes there occurs developmental changes and these changes are what is given the name of metamorphogenesis as you can see in the figure we have learned about the metamorphogenesis in respect of a butterfly in which first we have the egg which converts into the caterpillar after the caterpillar gets converted into this particular stage and finally we have the butterfly so this is what this is the physical changes and these physical changes or these complete physical changes is what is referred to as the metamorphogenesis one more point you have to remember is that it is very difficult to identify in the initial stages of the development that what would be the final product reason being there occurs a complete transformation you can see the egg first gets developed into caterpillar and the caterpillar using subsequent stages gets converted into a butterfly so there occurs a complete or there occurs a holistic change in the physical appearance and hence it is given the name of metamorphogenesis and now metamorphogenesis is what we have understood and what is holometabolis so holometabolis refers to complete metamorphogenesis i hope these terms are clear to you now let's move forward now talking about the stages of development so we have mainly four stages of development after the embryonic stage the first one is the egg then we have the larva after that we have the pupa and the fourth one is adult which is also given the name of imago you have to remember about this because in exam the questions have been asked from this particular area as well so first we have the egg which converts into larva larva gets converted into the pupa and finally the adult which is also given the name of imago i hope this much is clear now talking about the fly so I did not get a complete simple figure so I have uploaded this one I just wanted to make sure that you understand about that what is anterior what is posterior because if you remember or if you have gone through the syllabus so anterior posterior axis development is also very very important so before getting into the depth of the topic you need to have the basics cleared so we have Uh, consider this is a fly this is a fruit fly so the initial part or the front part is what is anterior position then the back position is what is given the name of the posterior one in the back front that is the upper level is what is the dorsal and the lower one is what is known as the ventral position so remember about this very very nicely that is we have the front position as the anterior the back position as the posterior the upper one as the dorsal and the lower one as the ventral i hope this much is clear let's move forward now now talking about the three groups of the genes see in this particular video i am trying to give you a highlight of each and every point reason be after this particular video we'll be having a complete usage of these points these terms would be used so it is very important that you understand this particular video very very nicely so we have three groups of genes in order for a drosophila to get to complete its development and convert into the anterior posterior axis and also develop its ventral and the dorsal side it requires three group of genes the very first one is the maternal genes second one is the zygotic or the segmentation gene and the third one is the homeotic selection genes so remember about this very very nicely that is the first one are the maternal genes second one is the zygotic or the segmentation and the third one is homeotic selector genes so remember about this let's move forward in term of the zygotic or the segmentation genes that is the second one there are three sub types of them the first one is the gap genes the second one is the pair rule genes and the third one is the segment polarity gene just remember about these names we'll get into the depth of this particular or all the genes in the further videos so this is very important that you remember about these points so this was all i wanted to share in this particular video i hope this video was helpful for you i have tried to highlight all the basic points of the drosophila so if you like this video do let me know in the comment sections below and also do not forget to like share and subscribe to botany insider 
and so thank you so much everyone for watching and i'll see you very soon with the next part of drosophila and the other videos as well so thank you and i'll see you soon bye